Within the field of hyperbaric medicine, there are a number of different units of measurement used to describe the pressure that's being exerted on the patient inside the chamber. And there's also two different ways of discussing the concept of pressure being applied to the patient in the chamber, which are absolute pressure versus gauge pressure. The reason that this is important is that when we're applying hyperbaric oxygen, we wanna make sure we're using the right protocol. Or if I'm directing somebody to get hyperbaric oxygen, I wanna make sure that the words I'm using are crystal clear so that the office that's gonna be treating this patient understands what that protocol is going to be. And without a very clear understanding and being clear that the words we're using are the words we want to be using, to express what that protocol looks like. This is critical for making sure that patients are getting what they're expecting and that we're delivering exactly what we wanted to deliver. That is what we're gonna cover in today's video. Okay, so let's start with the units of measurement. It's a more simple conversation. Units of measurement, as in, let's say for distance, it might be inches or meters or miles or kilometers. We need to be able to understand that different units of measurements are gonna equal different distances. Well, pressure is no different. And in the world of hyperbarics, there are multiple units of measurement that are still currently being used interchangeably throughout the literature. We have feet of seawater, and the reason we have that is because a lot of this information really stems from the diving industry. And so measuring in depth, literally of feet of seawater, is still very commonly used in the industry. There's also feet of freshwater, and believe it or not, there are slight differences between feet of seawater and feet of freshwater with regard to pressure because there's greater density in seawater than there is in freshwater. And then we have pounds per square inch, or PSI. We also have kilopascals, or KPA. We could also be using bar, or millimeters of mercury. These are all different units of measurement that we use to describe the pressure being exerted on the patient from the chamber environment. Again, this is a little bit more straightforward. Somebody measures something in inches, somebody else wants it in centimeters, and we can convert from inches to centimeters. Again, same thing applies here. We just need the formulas in order to be able to convert from one unit of measurement to the other. And so if I read a paper, let's say that was describing the hyperbaric exposure in millimeters of mercury, however my machine measures in pounds per square inch, I could simply convert millimeters of mercury to pounds per square inch, and I would know exactly what that protocol needs to be. This is important, again, because we wanna make sure that the patients are getting the protocol that they required to help make sure that the patient is going to get the benefits that we were hoping that they're gonna get. The other side of this conversation is a little bit more confusing for many people, and that's the difference between absolute pressure and gauged pressure. Very simply, gauged pressure is the amount of pressure that the physical chamber is exerting on the patient. In other words, if right now my chamber was empty and nobody was in it, and my gauge measures pounds per square inch, as an example, if nobody's in there and the door is open, then my gauge would register zero. That's gauged pressure. However, right now, you and I, we're all being exposed to atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure that we're being exposed to is literally the reason that we're able to drive oxygen from our environment into our circulation through that concentration gradient. It's atmospheric pressure that does that. At sea level, we call that one atmosphere or one ATA. And one ATA is the physical weight and the pressure that the atmosphere that we live in is exerting on us. Just for reference sake, one atmosphere of pressure is equal to 14.7 PSI. So if we go back to the example I was using, my chamber is off, the door is open, nobody's inside, there's no treatment going on, the gauge on my machine says zero. However, as that patient is getting into the chamber, we know that they're surrounded by the atmospheric pressure. So technically, they're already getting one atmosphere or 14.7 PSI. And then when they go into the chamber, they're gonna get an additional amount of pressure from the chamber itself. So conceptually, gauge pressure is the amount of pressure being exerted by the machine. Absolute pressure is a term used to describe the amount of pressure that the patient is experiencing in total, both from the machine as well as from the environment that they were in before going into the machine. So absolute pressures are always one full atmosphere's worth of pressure greater than gauged pressure. We're working really hard over here at HBOT USA to make sure that all the people looking for this kind of information are able to find it. When you like it, when you subscribe to it, when you share these videos, that tells YouTube that this content is valuable. When YouTube knows this content is valuable, they tend to help other people searching similar concepts 
find the answers that they're looking for. So please do me a favor, like it, subscribe it, and share it so that YouTube knows how valuable the information is that we're giving you. And so again, this concept can be very confusing, both for patients as well as practitioners. A question we get very often as one example is, I'm going to two atmospheres, but it seems like the machine says I'm only going to one. In other words, my machines are gauged in PSI. So let's use that as the example. When they go into the chamber, if they can see the gauge, what they're gonna see is 14.7. And so to them in the chamber, I told them that they're going to two ATA, two atmospheres. However, the gauge is only measuring one atmosphere of pressure. But understanding now the difference between absolute pressures and gauge pressures, this should make sense. They are at two ATA, two atmospheres absolute. They're getting one atmosphere's worth of pressure from the chamber, and then they're already getting one atmosphere of pressure from the atmosphere itself. So anytime you hear somebody talking about hyperbaric saying, well, I go to two atmospheres, it's really only in one additional atmosphere on top of the one we were already getting. So it's literally gonna be doubling the atmospheric pressure that we're typically being exposed to without being in the chamber. I even get questions around this from practitioners like, hey, I said I wanted my patient to go to two atmospheres, but they're reporting that they're only getting one atmosphere in the chamber. So it's very important that we're always comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges. We cannot be comparing apples to oranges. They're very, very different. So we want to make sure that if somebody says, hey, I want this patient to go to three atmospheres, and then that's the end of the story. Well, would that be three atmospheres absolute or three atmospheres on the gauge? Especially when we're talking about three atmospheres, it would be three atmospheres absolute. So two on the gauge and one from the environment. Otherwise, it would likely be way too high of a pressure. But it's worth asking questions so that everybody is on the same page. So anytime I give a protocol, I always give it with the appropriate units like two ATA or atmospheres absolute. Or in some cases, I might even ask the clinic, well, what are your hyperbaric chambers metered in? And then once they tell me what they're metered in, I will give them the pressure that I actually wanted them to get. Maybe I wanted them to get 45 feet of seawater. Maybe I wanted them to get 14.7 PSI gauge. Perhaps I wanted them to get two ATA exactly. Whatever the case is, if I know what their gauges are metered in, then I could be very specific with regard to the recommendation that I'm making. Likewise, if some other practitioner is giving me a protocol for their patient, I just double check that we're talking about the exact same units and whether we're talking about gauge or absolute so that I'm ensuring the fact that I'm going to deliver the exact protocol that that practitioner wanted me to deliver. So there are a few additional levels to this conversation, but I really just wanted to introduce the concept in this video. Quite honestly, this is a concept that we usually spend about two or three hours going over in the courses that we teach, just to make sure everybody's very competent at converting the units of measurement between different units and very clear about the differences between absolute engaged pressures so that we can be crystal clear when we're creating protocols, recommending protocols, or reading about protocols in the research and then applying them within our office. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you next week. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way. And that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top, you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.